For about two months now, I've been social distancing from my friends and family, and not because the greatest and most massive pandemic of our time is currently occurring, but because I really just needed a break from all of them. However, millions of people currently not living in Confederate Georgia are staying home to save lives. Quarantining myself seemed really great at first. Wait, so you're telling me I can stay home, work from home, lie in my bed, wear my pajamas, not go to the gym, binge watch The Circle, and keep distance from everyone I know for the next few weeks? Sign me the fuck up. But after a while, I began feeling physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausted. Postponing Aries season was one of the hardest decisions myself and many other April babies had to make. But a lot of us are finding the pressure to complete our laundry lists of goals and projects even more difficult to handle. Safe to say, it's a hard time for us extroverts out there. Have you also been feeling unmotivated and uncreative when really what you want to do is feel inspired and have your artistic epiphany? Do you want to take this time to jumpstart your Athleisure for Dogs fashion line out of your New York City apartment when really all you have the motivation for is to rewatch the entire season of How I Met Your Mother again for the third time. Well, what if I told you there might be a reason for that? Let's talk about being alone. Kind of sounds like something my therapist would say. It's a common idea that being exposed to the outside world is a catalyst for finding inspiration, which makes sense because we as humans are naturally very social creatures. We crave connections and company, and it's no secret that collaboration drives innovation. And all of this is certainly true, but there is overwhelming evidence that shows isolation could be the key to your creativity. In fact, many of the world's greatest artworks were done in isolation. The famous Pablo Picasso once said, without great isolation, no serious work can be done. Yeah, I'm sure all of his isolation was self-induced and not because he couldn't keep a woman around. If any man ever painted that, in my image, you're sure as hell we would not be together much longer. Aside from art, Albert Einstein and Isaac Newton also were lone wolves who received most of their information and knowledge not from interpersonal communication, but from books. Esther Buchholz actually wrote a whole book on how solitude is a very important and very necessary part of our human existence. She also knows a lot of her patients regaining a lot of their mental capacity just from spending more time alone. You know, I used to have a high school film teacher named Mr. Buchholz. Hey Will, sorry I didn't make it in the film industry and I settled for YouTube. Another woman named Julie Bowker, a professor at University of Buffalo and also a really smart lady with a PhD, did a test relating stress, anxiety, and creativity to social withdrawal, and she found that her antisocial participants tested better on the creative thinking scale and had overall less anxiety. So you're probably wondering, Kelsey, if social distancing is so important, why is it that I can't even get up and check my work emails without falling back into bed in the fetal position and crying over my MacBook Pro? Well girl, don't you worry, I'm about to get you learned real quick and let you know why. You probably already know that your iPhone is killing your sleep cycles and preventing you from having the ability to have a normal human conversation. But did you know it could also be killing your creativity? Instead of letting your mind wander and getting deep into your thoughts, you're letting Apple swindle you into paying $3.99 for extra gems and cooking fever so you can complete the gourmet level restaurant. Recent studies show that our iPhones are actually training our brains to become bored more easily, which also explains why I have the attention of a baby squirrel. It is a vicious cycle that reduces our ability to focus and then forces our brains to seek out more intense stimulation. Being bored is also known as a moment of creative pause. When you allow your mind to drift, you allow it to come up with more ideas and understanding. It also is the motivator to help you start that Leisure for Dogs brand. Psychologists Karen Gasper and Brianna Middlewood conducted a study at Penn State where they asked participants to watch videos that evoke certain feelings, relaxation, distress, elatement, and boredom. They then conducted a divergent thinking test where they had to think up different words in a group. And sure enough, the board group tested way higher than the other groups, proving that their boredom increased their creative thinking. To sum this point up, allowing your mind to wander and daydream increases your ability to think creatively. So the next time you're standing on that ridiculously long Trader Joe's line just to get your everything but the bagel seasoning, put your phone in your pocket and try to just stand there. about to give you a reason to spend the rest of your stimulus package on cute office supplies. It turns out that you can increase your creativity and productivity by hyping up your workstation. An environmental psychologist named Lee Chambers argues that if you create a workspace that is conducive to productivity in a period of isolation, you are less likely to have excessive distraction and more likely to stay in a creative flow. This makes sense, of course, because if you put yourself in an environment where you only work, it tells your brain, hey brain, 
time to start working. For instance, if you do your work in bed all the time, your body and your mind are both going to think that it's time to take a nap or time to go to bed. Or quite the opposite, your body and mind can think you're still in work mode and that could prevent you from falling asleep easily. Another reason you should create a productive workspace is because you won't get as distracted with the little tiny things that don't matter, like untangling your headphones for the 20th time this week. Get your shit together. Make sure all of your devices are plugged in and charged and ready to go. Get yourself a chair that's comfortable enough to sit in all day. Invest in whatever you can to make sure that you are in a productive environment. Just think, you might be working from home for the rest of your life at the rate things are going. So you're gonna need an office and a workspace that you love and more toilet paper. Did you know that Steve Jobs was known for having walking meetings? This is because walking could be a great way to boost your creativity. He also wore a lot of black turtlenecks, but I can confirm it doesn't make you more creative, just more stylish. Some Stanford researchers actually wanted to find out if this was true or if it was just an Apple cult tradition. What they did is they had some participants walk outside and they had some participants pushed in a wheelchair outside. They also did the same thing for participants walking on a treadmill indoors and sitting down in a chair indoors. The results were obvious that the active peeps killed their lazy peeps and were overall better creative thinkers. What was also interesting about this study is that walking only helped boost creativity and was really bad actually for thinking of one focused question or answer. And this doesn't just apply to walking. You can do any kind of physical activity to boost your creativity, except running. Someone please tell my boyfriend I hate running and I'm not gonna do it with him. I first heard about this concept on a TED talk by Tim Harford, and he argues that slowly multitasking on a variety of projects actually increases your ability to think creatively and to solve problems. A psychologist named Bernice Adison conducted a very long study about the working habits of very productive and very successful people, many of whom who have won the Nobel Prize. These scientists were cooking up studies and ideas and articles like they were just hot bagels in a Long Island bagel shop. And the common thread she found between all of these people were that they were all slow motion multitaskers. They all worked on these scientific papers and theories at the same time throughout the duration of their life. If you're interested in learning more about this concept and want to watch Tim's full TED talk, I'll link it right up here. It's weird because I thought that my inconsistency and my need to hop around to a lot of different projects was my tragic flaw and that I couldn't get anything done, but it turns out the people that do that are actually going to be more successful and have more completed projects within their lifetime than people that only focus on one thing at a time. Just like how my dad only focused is on Fox News and nothing else. With all this free time on your hands, I'm sure you've been taking numerous walks around the block. Your dogs must be so happy. Wait, you haven't been walking around the block? Have you left your house since March? In addition to the million health benefits that nature provides, it also is, you guessed it, great for boosting your creative thinking. Some scientists and professors working at some university started some study about something in nature. What they did was had some participants go on a four day hike and some stay behind. Guess what they found? The people that went hiking scored 50% better on a divergent thinking test than their lazy peers. So that's all the information I have for you guys today. If you have any tips or other things that you've been doing to stay creative, active, and motivated in quarantine, I want to know about it. So write it down in the comments. Also, if you have any more tips on how to acquire more gems in Cooking Fever without having to pay for it. If you like this video, help a gangster out and give this video a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel and share this with your friends that you want to say, hey, You've been kind of lazy lately. You should get off your ass. And lastly, if you want to be notified about when I post my next video, you can click the little bell at the bottom of this screen. Now I'm gonna go buy some more work pajamas. We crave connections and who we crave? They worked. We got it, you have a motorcycle. And doing to stay active and creative and motivated. Bless you.